everyone, Carol here at Oak House Journals and as always a big warm welcome from me. Um, if you've been watching my channel lately you will have seen that I have been um, posting videos on these little embroideries that I've been doing on um, rusted fabric and um, I've had so many of you ask me how I rust my fabric and if I would do a tutorial so that's what I'm planning to show you. Um, it's not a quick hit, I'm afraid. Um, I actually use two methods and I will show you both. But in this video, I'm just going to cover very quickly um, one or two things that you need to bear in mind and um, the items that you might want to, to use and gather together. Let me say that I'm no expert at all at how to do this. How I rust my fabrics is entirely what I've picked up by browsing um, on YouTube and Googling the subject. I've not read any books or anything like that. Um, so there will be, without a doubt, um, better methods and certainly other methods um, out there in the ether that may be far better um, for you. These are just the two methods that I use to get this sort of result, which is exactly what I want for what I'm doing with it, which is for embroidering on or for making journal covers. Um, the other thing is that these methods are very, very basic methods. Um, they, as I say, give me the results that I'm looking for, and that is perfect. Rusting fabric is not an exact science by any means. Um, the results will vary and be different every time, even if you religiously follow the same technique or the same method. Um, there are just so many variables. Um, the fabric that you use, the temperature... Um, the length of time that you leave it to, to dry, whether you're air drying it or putting it on a radiator, drying it inside or outside or in the sun or in the shade. Um, the items that you use to rust also will make a difference. So please don't expect perfect results each and every time or consistently the same each and every time. Um, that's just not going to happen and if you're like, a bit like me and OCD it can be so frustrating um, I have been trying for the last couple of weeks to get consistent results so that I could show you with this video and it just wasn't going to happen I get fantastic results and I'm delighted with my results as you can see here I love my fabrics <laughs> but they're not consistent absolutely not consistent um, and actually if you chill and relax that is most definitely part of the fun of uh, rusting fabric now obviously the main caveat is rusting is a chemical reaction and um, you're dealing with chemicals regardless of whether um, you're using what I call domestic or household chemicals or proprietary products so be careful everybody um, please please wear gloves um, you're actually, if nothing else, you're actually handling um, rusted metal. It can be sharp. Um, you don't want any scratches and cuts and you so, certainly don't want any of the chemicals or the rust getting um, into your skin or under the skin um, and heading off to the hospital for a tetanus jab. So I wear plastic gloves. Now, any old plastic gloves will do so long as they're going to protect your, your hands. The other thing, obviously, is, again, chemicals. So you don't want to be doing it uh, or rusting on any work surface that is going to be um, damaged. Um, so protect your work surfaces, cover it over. I mean, I you will see me. I actually um, do most of my rusting on a stainless steel drainer. Um, but I do cover it over with bubble wrap, and I certainly, certainly wipe it down um, thoroughly. Uh, each and every time after I've um, um, done any spraying or anything like that. Okay, let's get on to the nice bit now, now that we've had the health warning. These are the results that you can get with these two methods. These are the results you're going to get with the first method that I'm going to show you, um, how I created these results with that method. And then for the next method you are going to get results similar to this. Now, it depends on what suits you, um, but I have to say, I think 
both are absolutely stunning um, and I'm really happy with it. So what do I use um, when I create my fabrics? Well, all of this fabric is just plain white bedding. It looked like this originally and all it was was part of a pillowcase or an old sheet. So these are, um, it's cotton and it's all recycled um, or upcycled or reused or whatever you want to call it. Um, as you can see, this is all, all I've got left of my current pillowcase that I decided I was going to, um, going to use. So all of these, when I started off, were pristine white. Um, if you use a lot of fabric conditioner, you might want to give it a good wash beforehand. Um, I haven't with these, I do use fabric conditioner in with my wash cycle, but um, I didn't give this a wash, but I do know that fabric conditioner can alter your results. So that is one considerant consideration and as I said to you there's a million and one variables here everybody so you might want to give um, any recycled fabrics that you're about to use um, a wash beforehand it's exactly the same as um, when you're eco dyeing you scour your fabrics before you eco, eco dye um, onto fabric it's exactly the, the same thing um, the other thing is if you are using brand new um, fabric then that usually has a manufacturer's coating on it so again you need to give that a good wash to get rid of that manufacturer's coating. Um, I can't tell you what anything other than plain old cotton I mean this is uh, I think it was 400 or 600 count Egyptian cotton um, I can't tell you what any other fabric will be like to use because this is all I rust. And the reason I rust this is because I know that it takes the dye really, really well. And also it's just fabulous. It's so soft to, to embroider through. Okay, so what do I use to get these effects? Now, that all depends on what items you find, what pieces of metal you find um, that you want to rust with. Um, I, you will see me use these. Now these are just cogs and gears that I had in amongst my stash. I had oodles of them, um, silver ones as well as bronze ones and gold coloured ones. They're all metal so they will all rust. And as you know, anything that is metal will rust. Um, so you could use cogs and gears like this, you could use coins, you could use ball chains, nails, screws, um, washers. They rust really well, even if they say that they are corrosive resistant. Give them a try because I had a massive box recently, um, more than I was going to use. So I threw some of those into the mix and I will show you in, in just a moment. Um, split rings will, will rust. Um, I've seen people use saw blades, um, keys, bottle caps, safety pins, paper clips. Basically anything um, that's metal is worth giving a go. Now, to get this sort of effect, let me find one that I can show you. Uh, this sort of effect here and here. Uh, have I got any more that I can show you? And here I've used ball chains to get that effect and these were just a packet of ball chains that I had in my stash I bought them from Amazon I've got more here than I would use so I just decided to throw some of these in and actually these rust really really well so I love using those um, but when you've used them don't throw them out for goodness sake Put them to one side, let them dry out. They will look horrible and manky. <laughs> Trust me. These are what I use. Now, you can see in here that there's my washers and they were, um, as I say, beautiful and pristine when I first put them in. So I've got some little split rings here as well, here. Um, there's some of my cogs um, and gears and some look worse than others because some rust better than others. Um, I love my cogs and gears because they give me a lovely white effect. You can see I've got some nails in here. Um, I don't think I've got any screws. Um, 
there are some old charms in here. I think there's a pair of scissors in here um, that was in my stash and I decided to see if I could get that to rust. So all sorts. And what I do with them is dry them off or let them dry air dry when I finish using them and then just put them in these little boxes and then they're ready to go next time round. Now these are fabulous to use but because they're brand new you've got to be a little bit more persistent with them um, in terms of allowing them to rust and do their magic. Um, they're not going to rust as quickly as these, which have already started the rusting process. But persevere, please persevere, because these will rust. Um, so if you have new washers or new screws or new nails, then just be just persevere with them because they will rust. They're metal. They've got to. It's a chemical reaction. So all of that lot will give you some lovely images like this. Look, there's a, a cog there. This was, there's some old, um, sorry, I should have mentioned right down at the bottom. There we go. There are some coins. Now, they're silver coins. They're, it's English coinage here um, because I'm in the UK. But I've got two pences. Um, one pence is in there, there's 10 pence, there's 5 pence, I think you can even see a 20 pence piece or a couple of them in that, that corner. They will rust as well um, and I think that was probably a, um, uh, a 1 pence piece. And then here's some of my little split rings down there. These lines here are obviously little nails that are in there. Um, and then this is the result on the other side. You can see the ball chain there um, and some more results here. Now, sometimes you will find that they will rust and give off this um, green colour. Um, quite a lot of the silver uh, coins, English silver coins, will do that. Um, it just depends whether you want that look in amongst your, um, uh, your fabrics. Sometimes you're just not going to know... Um, Sometimes you put a cog down and it's absolutely fine um, on one occasion and then you put another one down on another occasion and it rusts green. So I'm not, I, I, I'm not an expert, as I say, but you'll just find that that, that will happen. And there you can see uh, that's one of my washers. So that's what I use for my bits and bobs. Um, but go ahead and explore some more and um, see what your end results are like. So I'm going to leave it there um, for this video. But in part two, I will show you the method that I use using household products. So using a steamer, using vinegar, using salt. Um, and then in the third video, I will show you the other technique or other method I use where I use a proprietary product. Okay, everybody, take care now. Bye-bye.